This is Halen. Halen. Oh, okay. So how old is Halen? Halen is, can you make like this, Halen? She's 21 months. Wow. <laughs> Almost yeah. two years. <laughs> Almost two years. Okay. Wait, wave to wave to Riley and Mackenzie. Yeah, they're on there. Yeah, That's you want to see them. Oh, That's here's girl. Auntie, Auntie Behe, Uncle Scott. <laughs> they're, Hi, also, they're also Kung Shung Du members. This is Haley. This is Halen's um mom and dad. Uh-huh. And they're her cousins waving. <laughs> yes. Okay. Go outside. Don't go outside. She's gonna go outside play. <laughs> All right. Uh, How do you like my fancy background? <laughs> I really like it. Oh my gosh. Bye. We'll see you later, Halen. <laughs> okay. So this is not on rice, but this is on my on my life at least the last 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm in Oregon currently um, pursuing veterinary school. Um, so this is just on my day off for July 4th and kind of what I did yesterday. And I have kind of some videos and, and things dispersed. Um, so this is our like drive over to Newport, which is um, the coast. And it's about a 45 minute drive from Corvallis where I'm living. Um, so yeah, it's very, I love all the evergreens and just like the, the nature. Um, and then this is kind of like us entering Newport. Um, they have their cute little sign here. And sorry, my windshield's really dirty, but it tends to get that way during the summertime, I, I find. Um, and then once it got to Newport, we went to this place called Mo's, M-O apostrophe S. And it's just this really popular seafood place in, I guess, the Oregon coast. So they have a bunch of different, um, a few different places or um, little shops or restaurants that you could visit. And this is kind of just my dog. This is Daffy. Um, and then I got the salmon sandwich and then my boyfriend Dane got the salmon fish and chips and that was all really really good highly recommend if you're ever on the Oregon coast uh, let's see and then this is kind of our view near our picnicking area so it's super pretty I really enjoyed it it was such a beautiful day no clouds um, but it's really hot right now it's I think 100 degrees right now and it get, tends to get this way during the summertime in Oregon. So pretty typical. Um, and then just kind of like another view from another um, vantage point, but it's so pretty. And I could just like sit here for days if I wanted to. Let's see, sorry. And then these are kind of just some pictures that I took. So stills, um, just some really beautiful scenery. And sometimes you can see actually humpback whales off the coast, kind of similar to like Makapu'u and things like that. So it reminded me a lot of home. And I think that's why I really like the coast. Um, and then we went to this other beach called Agate. Um, that's also on the coast. Um, so you can see it's since it's a very long walk to the beach <laughs> and the parking lot. I, it feels like a mile because you're just like, um, I guess being dragged down by the sand sometimes. And it was really windy yesterday. So like the sand was just blowing all over the place. And this is kind of just like a video of the sand. I thought it was really cool the way that it just like blows in the wind, but it's really, really pretty. I don't know. I thought it was really cool. So I took a video. Let's see. And then it's us like going a little closer to the water. And it was easier to walk now that it was the sand, sand was a little more damp. Um, yeah, that was us walking like what felt like two miles long. And then we finally got to the water. It's actually really pretty, definitely not as pretty as home. And then it's my dog. I had to carry her because she refused to walk. I don't know why she has legs because I just carried her. 
yeah, it's a really pretty day. Definitely doesn't beat the beaches at home. And then, oh my gosh, it was so windy. It was hilarious. My boyfriend was trying to put the our little mat down and just poor my poor little dog just getting blown by the winds a little bit. But she's so cute. She actually doesn't have any eyes because we took them out when she about, I guess, three years ago before I started vet school. But she's so much more comfortable now and just loves just exploring, even though she can't see anything. She just loves it. And then this kind of just started a little drive back to Corvallis. I feel like I just love the beautiful scenery of um, the countryside. And this is kind of near, yeah, wine country, Willamette Valley. So there's a lot of wineries in the area if you're ever interested in, in the area. And I had to take a video of the beautiful sunset in Oregon. So you don't get a lot of beautiful sunsets, not like home. Yeah. And then, and this is kind of just the, the fireworks. So yesterday, I just took a video of the grand finale because it was so beautiful. It was our first time going to something like this, at least here in Oregon. Um, but it was really, really nice. We're basically kind of tucked up on the side of the highway, if you can see here, and we're hoping that like cars don't hit us. So I hope my mom doesn't find out I did this, but <laughs> so you can see like cars just come by, but yeah, that's kind of, so that was my day yesterday. I know it's not about rice, but I had a really fun time. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, I think you're on mute. <laughs> Oh, I think you're muted. Unmute, Norman. Yeah, I, I. It reminds me of when I went down the Oregon Coast Road. That was so beautiful. But I uh, definitely want to do that. I'm gonna go to California next, so I definitely have to make that trip down the coast. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, and life does sound like rice, so I guess is rice life. Hmm. <laughs> I think so. At least in the Asian culture, it is. <laughs> a philosophical question that's, that's, that's true. okay let's go Mackenzie, on. Yeah, Mackenzie and Riley have been to Oregon a lot because their grandpa lives there and so they're going again this month oh okay so, what city it's nice to see all those all the, all the shots that you take because we recognize them <laughs> yes yes and if you haven't been to Tillamook I highly recommend Tillamook as well it's on the coast yeah sample cheese <laughs> yes yes yeah. absolutely the best I, i'm um, surprised i never got there because i i actually did a star thing in oregon from east coast to the west coast to east west south north and all the way through wow how far is that drive i feel like that's got to be like two days or something About two right? hours each i think it was, it was oh, okay yeah that's a lot though that's a lot of driving mm -hmm. so no norman i'm sorry to interrupt i just i just emailed you the link to the mochi video uh-huh oh. if you want to uh, you can add that on oh well, a, yeah right now it's uh if i could find it the problem is like right in the middle of things <laughs> but, okay i maybe i could just show it too if it, if there's time that would work. yeah sure okay so let's go to sophie are you ready sophie yeah, uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Um, oh, Micah's here. Hi, Micah. And Julie's here. Hello. And who else is here? Um, okay. Okay. Do you guys see it? Yep. Okay. Um. So I wanted to talk about all the rice dishes around the world. So... But I want to cover a little bit about the origin. It's not that much, but it's something. Okay, so the origins of rice. Like a few years ago, some scientists um, near the Yangtze River found some remains of the plants of rice. So it probably was in, it probably like originated from China and was there for a pretty long time. Um, 
Another thing that they found was rice farming tools from 4,000 to 5,000 BC. So people back then have been farming rice for a long time and it's become a lot, it's become a big factor of the economy. Um, but if you think about it, rice has become really widespread. And a big factor of this is like, it became really big in China and it just started to spread to other countries, probably by ships or just trading. Um, another a way it became, came to the Americas and Europe and the Europe is the Columbian Exchange, uh, 16th, 17th century AD. It was traded and it just kind of adapted to where it is now. So now I want to talk about some of the different dishes around the world. Um, first is onigiri and sushi. More than 2000 years ago, it was invented because it's like a super convenient meal and it's and it's also used during events to thank servants for their housework. Um, sushi was invented during the 1824 for street markets because they were fast and easy to prepare for the bustling streets and also they made a good amount of money. Um, Mexican rice, I actually really love Mexican rice because I just really like the flavor and it's a good twist on the of, on the original. It was created in the 1500s in Mexico. It came through the Spanish invasion because they wanted to, they thought that there was going to be gold in the Americas and had to go through Mexico. It's still a really popular dish today it, because it just blends together all the different flavors and stuff and it tastes really good. Um, another one that's really popular because all my family really like this dish is um, Thai mango sticky rice. It originates from 14th century Thailand and it's really popular with locals and tours because the thing with Thailand is they have like really, really good mangoes and it just goes well with the rice. It's really sweet and, you know, it smells good. Okay, basmati rice. So there's actually a lot to go for basmati rice because it's not just in India. It's in a lot of the Middle Eastern countries. And also it's kind of confusing on how it it's so different from the rice we know, but it's mostly just because it adapts to the environment and all the factors that we're doing it to it to make it the rice we want it to be. It's really unique because it's like kind of longer and thinner and it has like an unusual taste, but basically it's just rice. Okay, risotto. I actually didn't know risotto came from Italy and it's kind of stupid, but it's okay. Um, it was invented in 1802 and it was popularized because it could survive during the hot human temperatures. And also the rice flourished there because of the temperatures and the weather. So cities made a lot of money from it. Um, another reason why it was really popular is because the locals could mix whatever they had, like leftovers of anything into it, and it would still taste good. So it was mostly just for practicality and also because it, it was a big money maker. Um, and then lastly, we have the Spam Musubi because it was invented during World War II. It was very cheap, Spam was very cheap, and it was really popular with the locals and immigrants. Um, it is, it is kind of murky, this, when it was created and who created it, but a lot of people say it was created by Barbara Funamaru because she was actually in the Japanese internment camps and it was just a good way to use the rice farming and stuff and a cheap ingredient that was really popular at the time during the war. And she took a lot of inspiration on the sushi, but it was still really good and it's very popular today because of how cheap it is and it tastes good um thank you for listening and i hope you enjoyed we're gonna play riley's one now all right hello sorry i was unable to make it to the meeting today i'm currently in south korea on a korean war veterans uh trip for their grandchildren so today i will do my presentation on chinese egg fried rice so what is Chinese egg fried rice, some of you may ask. 
Well, it's a popular Chinese dish that is made from leftover rice, eggs, vegetables, and any other ingredient that you choose. And、um, it is a simple yet flavorful, often enjoyed as a main dish or side. And my family typically eats it for breakfast, but people often eat it for lunch or dinner as well. So the history of fried rice. So many believe that it is originated in the Sui Dynasty, which was from 589 to 618 AD in China, and they developed a way to use leftover rice, and it prevented a lot of food waste for them. So here are some of the ingredients that are commonly used in egg fried rice. So there's the leftover rice, eggs. Some people use mixed vegetables,、uh, soy sauce, oil, and garlic. And to make it taste better, you can also use fish sauce, and also、um, any other ingredient if you would like. So the preparation steps. So first, you gotta prepare the ingredients. So you gotta make sure all your vegetables are diced and chopped up, and you gotta beat eggs to like scrambled eggs. And then you gotta use the pan and throw in some oil and heat it up. And then first you gotta scramble the eggs in the pan and then leave it aside once you cook the scrambled eggs. And then you stir fry the vegetables until they're nice and soft. And then add the rice to that. And then you season it with soy sauce or anything else like salt and pepper or the fish sauce. And then once that's all cooked, you add the scrambled eggs back to the pan and mix. And then once you're done with that, you can serve it with green onions or any garnish that you would like. So some tips for the perfect fried rice would be using old rice, like day old rice that you had from dinner the other day.、Um, it just makes it、uh, have some better texture than using fresh rice, and、um, you should cook on high heat so that it. Well, it cooks faster and it adds a smoky flavor. And、um, make sure not to overcrowd the pan, or so you should cook in batches, just in small portions. Because if you cook it all at once, then it's not going to turn out as well. And then、um, make sure you even out the ingredients so it's not overpowered by rice or the vegetables. And also,、uh, a Hawaiian tip for the perfect fried rice would be. Using spam to add a lot of flavor to it, I really like it. So you should do it too. Variations of egg fried rice. So these are just three variations that I searched and found. So there's Yangzhou fried rice, which includes shrimp, ham, and some vegetables. There's chicken fried rice, which has diced chicken, which has a lot of protein, which is great. And there's vegetarian fried rice, which is just a lot of vegetables and no meat, which is fine but not preferred by me. Nutritional information: Egg fried rice has a lot of protein. It has vitamins and minerals from the vegetables and has carbs from the rice. So make sure you're eating your、um, egg fried rice.、Um, serving suggestions. So it can be served as a main dish or side dish, with any other dish, but it doesn't really matter as long as you enjoy it. <laughs> and it can be paired with anything. Just enjoy your fried rice, and you should garnish it with green onion or parsley to add some extra flavor after you've cooked it, just to make it colorful and taste slightly better. And that is my. Presentation on egg fried rice, and that's why you should make Chinese egg fried rice. It's delicious. It's easy to make, and it's a great way to use leftover rice when you have a lot of it. All right. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed my presentation on egg fried rice. <laughs> why is these presentations making me hungry? <laughs> <laughs> okay,、uh, Micah, do you want to say something before we?、Uh... Start your video. Yeah, hello, Kunshu Du Society. Um, me and my brother prepared this video on fried rice as well. Um, Riley's my cousin, so we kind of think alike a little bit. But I hope you guys enjoy this video.
Hello, Kung Shung Du Society. This is Michael O'Hara. And Aaron O'Hara. And this is our presentation on rice. So the history and importance of rice. Rice is one of the most popular foods in the world. The different recipes and its variety of uses have made it one of the most sought and heavily consumed products around the globe. Although rice has been farmed in China since 8,000 BC, it has only recently truly emerged as the main food of the country. China's rice production has evolved significantly over the past centuries, transitioning from traditional farming methods to modern high yield agricultural practices, which have dramatically increased output. Now, some Chinese rice dishes we'll talk about. The first one is fried rice. Fried rice is a very popular dish made with leftover rice, vegetables, eggs, and it often includes meat or seafood. All stir fried together with soy sauce and other seasonings. The next Chinese rice dish is clay pot rice. This is a comforting dish cooked in a clay pot, and it is typically with marinated meats like chicken, pork, or Chinese sausage, along with rice that develops a crispy bottom layer. Another one is the Eight Tree Treasures rice pudding, a traditional dessert often served during Chinese New Year, made with glutinous rice and filled with a variety of dried fruit, nuts, and sometimes sweet bean red paste symbolizing prosperity and good fortune. The next is the sticky rice cake, also known as the New Year cake. This chewy dessert is made from glutinous rice flour and can be sweet or savory. The sweet version is offered flavored with ingredients like brown sugar or red bean paste. And for our next slide, I will be going through the steps on how to cook fried rice. So the first main step is to prepare ingredients uh for the rice you typically include cooked and cooled rice uh preferably a day old chopped vegetables such as carrots peas and green onions beaten eggs and then your choice of protein also you may have soy sauce sesame oil and any other seasonings ready next is to cook the eggs heat a bit of oil in a large skillet or a wok over medium high heat pour in the beaten eggs and scrabble them until just set Remove the eggs from the skillet and set aside. Next, you want to stir fry the vegetables and protein. Add more oil to the skillet and stir fry the vegetables and protein until cooked through. Start with the protein and then the vegetables. Next, the final step is to combine and season everything. Add the cooked rice to the skillet, breaking up any clumps. Stir fry everything together, mixing in the scrambled eggs. Add soy sauce, sesame oil, and any other desired seasonings. Stir fry for a few more minutes until the rice is heated through and everything is well combined and then adjust to your liking. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you, Kung Shung Du Society, for listening to our presentation on rice. We hope you guys have a blessed day. And Aaron, any last words? Um, long live Kung Shung Du. Long live Kung Shung Du. Okay. That was great. Okay. Let's go on. Uh, let's see. We have, is Petra? Petra's not here yet, huh? Petra's in Maryland right now. Okay. Okay, so we got Jade and Petra's video. Hey guys, I'm Jade. I'm Petra. And we're with the Kung Shung Du Society. And today we're going to be making fried rice. Fried rice is an Asian staple in all the Asian households, but we usually just make our own recipe. So right here, I'm just going to be chopping up some onion and then some garlic as well here i'm just mincing it at this up real quick and then i'm gonna chop up some lap chong as well we're gonna add the lap chong and garlic and onion to the pan For the vegetables, we're just going to be using some frozen peas and carrots. Next, we add the rice. We're just going to add some soy sauce. This is dark soy sauce right here. And then we're going to add some sriracha for spice. And then we're going to add in some fish sauce as well. 
just a little because it's really salty. And then we're just going to add in some oyster sauce. Here is the final finished fried rice. Wow, so good. Yummy. Mm. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Who did we miss here? Did you find Riley's one, uh, darling? Yes, um, this is Riley and Mackenzie's one. Okay. I, I can go ahead and play it off of my computer. Yep, sure, that'll um, work. Hello, we're going to be making spam mochulas. One for her and one for me. My mommy, Shana, Lam won a spam recipe contest and a trip to Las Vegas using a similar recipe. First, you have two cups of milk. Also, soak your dried mushrooms and shrimp if you are going to use them. This recipe is called Samochi rice, but you could use whatever meat you want, like a sport, chicken, lup chang, or cha siu. Today we're using organic chicken apple sausage because it's healthier. You can fry this, but we're going to put in the microwave truck. Make it brown. I'm only adding meat to my rice because I don't like vegetables. I don't want to shelf in my monkey place because I like that. Hi, I'm Riley. I like monkey rice because it has sausage in it. Sausage in it? Do you want to make some with mommy? Mm -hmm. And do you like mushrooms? Yeah. Okay, put some mushrooms in. Right here. Good. And then how about green onions and cilantro? After you add the goodies to the rice, add about a tablespoon of oyster sauce per okay. cup of rice. Now you mix it together. You need water to be about level to your monkey rice and meat. Put it in the microwave for five minutes. You need to put it in the microwave again, but first stir it. And for the same time in the microwave. Okay, that was really good. Uh, I enjoyed that. <laughs> okay, uh, did I miss anybody or is anybody else has a presentation uh, for today? Nobody, I don't see anybody. No hands going up. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. Uh, anybody else wants to say anything before we leave? Darlene? Yeah, I thought it was great. Okay. I thought it was great too. Let's yeah. Let's have some fried rice, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, now I'm getting hungry for fried rice. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay thank you everybody and we're gonna take off i guess okay see y'all later bye